When you're trying to draw or illustrate backgrounds, one of the biggest challenges is managing complexity. Often backgrounds involve large complex areas. You might have detailed forests that have trees, bushes, shrubs, grass. You might have a city environment that has buildings, people, cars, traffic lights, fire hydrants, etc. This might be set in a science fiction environment, which is what I'll be dealing with in this video, where you have futuristic versions of cities. The question is, what is all that stuff and how do we draw it? Much of the advice that you might frequently see is going to be about increasing your visual library, learning about the world. I think that this is definitely true. It's also just a matter of grinding through. You have to draw a lot of stuff. Drawing backgrounds can be laborious, but it can be cathartic at the same time. The real problem here is often just knowing where to start though. So what I want to do in this video is share with you a really, really simple framework and way of thinking about developing your backgrounds that I found really helpful for myself drawing comics, illustration, and concept art. This framework is really about breaking down the elements that we use in the background, thinking about them iconically, and also considering ourselves a little bit more as a director. This video is part of a series I have on the Drawing Codex channel about drawing backgrounds. Now, in this particular video, I'm going to do a hand drawing lesson, and I'm going to focus on, as I said, drawing a science fiction city and how we manage the complexity of this. This is going to be based on one of the cities that I have drawn in one of my professional comedy books, Star Atlas Core. A big part of this framework is really understanding how to focus on the shot and the task at hand. How do we make the thing that we need to draw right now as good as possible versus kind of getting lost in the weeds and thinking about perspective and background and all of these things that can actually be distracting from doing what you need to do right now. So in this video, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to focus on how to do a big, epic city science fiction shot. But I might do some follow-up videos where I deal with a more organic environment and some other things as well. If you're not aware, I also have a second channel that is essentially a podcast format show called The Visual Scholar. On the previous episode of that show, I actually went into a concept that I think is really linked to this idea. I talked about how to draw and think like a director. And I think a lot of these ideas actually intermingle. So if you have time, that might be worth checking out as well. I go into a lot of these thoughts in a little bit more detail and give some great examples. If you stick around to the end of this video, I'll share with you some little assignments and things that maybe you can do to implement these ideas into your own illustrations and just, you know, give them a try. Anyway, this should be a fun one. Let's jump in and get started. All right, welcome to The Drawing Codex. My name is Tim McBurney. I've been a professional working artist for over 20 years. And on this show, we're all about drawing cool stuff from our imagination, embracing the challenge of drawing and mastering the craft of line and color illustration. Now, just quickly, if you'd like to learn more about line and color illustration, I'm gonna show you some of the comic book pages that I've drawn of this particular city in this particular style. If you'd like to check out how I do that, you can check out my free quick start guide. It's aimed to get you up and running in Photoshop, developing your own simple, reliable line and color process and style. You get access to all of the brushes and PSDs that essentially go into developing the same style that I use in that comic. It's free. The link will be in the description. If that's something you're interested in, then go check it out. All right. So I want to show you how I actually do this and we'll do a demo with pencil and paper. That's what's going to be the majority of this video. This concept is something that I've used quite a bit. I really sucked at backgrounds. I began as someone who was, look, a character first artist. That's what really drew me to art, drawing characters, designing characters. And when it came to draw comics, it was, look, it was suck town. I was really bad at it. Had no idea what I was doing. So this idea of kind of thinking a little bit more iconically, thinking like a director and breaking it down into simple elements. Again, I'll share it with you in a minute, but you know, this is one of these things that both I noticed that I was doing as I got generally better at doing environments. I was like, ah, oh, this is kind of, you know, this is really not that hard. Like this is all that's happening. And then I sort of started to explain this to students, right? And try and like, hey, look, it's not as complicated as you think, right? You just have to do a few things. And then, you know, as I sort of formalized this concept, I could actually found that I would kind of utilize it in my own work and be like, okay, all right, I have a background that I think is maybe, you know, sort of a little bit outside my comfort zone. Some of these cities were outside my comfort zone in the beginning. You know, I hadn't drawn a lot of science fiction cities and I was like, okay, breathe. What's here? What do we have to do? 
What's involved? What are the elements there? How can I, you know, utilize a lot of these different concepts? And again, actually, you know, see if I can follow my own advice and whether it, whether it works, right? And so that's kind of what I did. And, and this has become a major part of my process. Anyway, let's jump over to the drawing table and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, here we are at the drawing table. Now, this is a pretty simple concept and I just want to sort of outline the basics of it before we progress and I do some demos and sort of show you how I actually apply these things. What I'm really talking about is that as artists, one of the ways we manage complexity and get a cityscape that is a futuristic cityscape like this, it has a particular design and I'll speak briefly to the design aspect of it in a second. That's probably a little bit outside the scope of this particular video. This really is about managing the complexity. But again, the goal is to be able to draw a city or a series of buildings and, and kind of have them look consistent. So the thing here is that I have this uh, Mondra 7 science fiction cityscape and it's set within this space station that is sort of floating in space. What I'm doing is drawing this little ring around here or other elements up there. Now, the trick is to get this feeling of complexity, of sophistication, and try and do it in a simplistic way that's easily repeatable, or at least that's one of my goals as an artist. It's also useful to understand this if you're doing concept design, because if you can understand how to complete, create the illusion of complexity with simple objects, then we can sort of model and create set pieces, and this is often how video game design is actually created for complex levels is actually just a whole bunch of little things and then the level designer goes and puts them all together and makes it you know look like a living breathing world i'm doing the same basic idea here and that's um, just a matter of understanding and breaking down an environment into a number of simple elements now again there's some practical elements to this and that really is about about set pieces and then there's some more amorphous abstract concepts, which are sort of about iconography. We've got the design. And again, this idea that I think you should consider yourself more of a director, someone who is choosing from set pieces that exist. And your job really is not necessarily to draw more stuff. It's to draw the same things, but arrange them in a pleasing pattern. And if you do that, it's an easy way to manage complexity and again, be able to repeatedly create the same type of scene and environment, have it feel the same, even though, again, what you might find if you look closely is there's a lot of variance to the design here. It's not necessarily, uh, you know, built all in 3D. Most of these ones that you're seeing are just me drawing. No 3D, nothing fancy. I'm just applying this basic idea. All right, so just before we jump into the actual drawing demo, it's worth talking about the design. Now, the design is very much to do with kind of how we come up with these shapes. So what are the set pieces? What's the feeling? What's the emotion? Like, where are they? How would they have been designed? How would they have been manufactured? We also need to think about how the iconography plays into those feelings, right? On, a, on an emotional level, how, how do these big shapes, are, are they sharp shapes? Are they soft shapes? And then we think about the patterns, the way they're arranged. Are they organically arranged? Or do they feel very sort of, um, you know, stiff and, and orderly in the way they're arranged? All of these things are going to be used when you actually go to apply these concepts. And I think the way that we do apply it is, as I often say, in, in a subconscious manner. I'm just drawing it and I am drawing, no pun intended, on a lot of the concepts that went into the design of this. Now, just briefly, I will create a video talking a little bit more about how I designed this particular city and, and that might shed a bit of light onto that. But certainly you can see that this is meant to be, hopefully, a bit of like a protopian, utopian science fiction environment. Yes, we are sitting in the middle of the, you know, the void of space. But once you get to one of these um, kind of space stations, it is an inviting place that people have built to, you know, feel as if it is a little bit like, you know, home or earth or whatever. But this one is built around an architectural style that is another aspect of the game where some of the different races have a sort of natural organic environment that looks a little bit like this. So there's a lot of stuff that goes into this, right? They're coming up with this idea. 
Most of these ideas are things that, again, the viewer doesn't really even need to understand, but it helps me as an artist to have some feeling for like, okay, this is why stuff looks like this. And I think that, again, the more you understand that sometimes we're doing that stuff in a design process, you might be hired as a video game artist or concept designer to think about these things, you know, break them up. But even if I'm not, I still like to think about the history, the story behind all of this, and that informs all of these concepts together. There was a lot of different design work that went into this, but again, it's probably outside the scope of this particular video. What I want to do here is talk about how we manage complexity. As I said, I have a video that I just created for the Visual Scholar podcast that talks about this idea. It's worth checking that out if you wanna do that. I think that's a good thing where I've designed the Visual Scholar podcast to be something that you can listen to while you draw. It really doesn't have any video components that are important, but you can look at it on YouTube, obviously. In that, I talk about how directors often think of themselves a little bit more as someone who is picking from what is available in the environment. You can only shoot your film where you can find a set that is gonna support the story. So you have people scouting locations, right? And when there's no location, it's a science fiction environment like this. Often we do a lot of concept art. We think about what is and isn't possible. And the director is at the top of that thinking about how, does these, how do these things and these ideas that I have available to me help me to tell my story? And that really is the key, is that we need to think about the story and the shot and the idea that we have at any one time and consider how we can draw from the things that are available to us in order to put that together. And I think often the answer there for me is less about draw more, come up with more, and it's much more about just pulling from very simple ideas and arranging them to give this illusion of complexity Keeping the iconography organized allows me to make sure that I can easily create shots that link together. So people are potentially imagining this, which has a higher fidelity, as they're looking at this, which has a much lower fidelity. It's this linking of iconography, set pieces, and pattern together that allows you, I think, to kind of often get many complicated ideas across very simply. But the key here, I think, again, if we just need to break it down, is to think a little bit more like a set designer, more like a director, and focus always on the shot at hand. The key is always about how do we tell a particular story. Now, I'm going to move this out of, out of frame, but just remember that is there. And what I'm sort of thinking about is, again, how do I create a simple shot in this instance? So, Let's imagine I have a frame and I need to fill it with city. Again, what's this for? Look, who knows, but let's imagine because it's important to consider the utility of the thing that you're drawing. But let's imagine it is an establishing shot. And what that means is we just need to show this particular city. We just need to show what's going on there. Now, what I'm going to do as I create this is to think about the iconic elements that I've designed. Again, we have our spherical buildings. Again, why they look like that, specifically how, how this works to in, engender the feelings that I want, I'll handle that in a, in a different video. We also have this idea of the structure, the framework, the foundation of a lot of these structures is this organic shape, these S curves. So the structures are built on that. We also have the concept of these kind of wings, almost like mechanical, physical embodiments of sails. This is where we might have one of these, but what we also have is the idea of elements that are connecting it to the ground. This allows me to think about, as I said, earlier, structure, dimensionality, and again, it just has a particular feeling. It has this feeling of old school 60s spaceships, which for me just kind of resonates. We also have towers, 
right? And these towers can be varying in complexity, but probably one of the keys is that they all, again, sort of grip the ground. So there's, there's a feeling of sort of groundedness to a lot of these ideas. And we can see that that idea is played out both in these big shapes, but also in these small ones, right? And again, there's a visual iconography there. There's a number of choices. And really, to create a lot of this complexity, I'm just combining these ideas. One, two, three, four, plus trees, foliage everywhere. Why? It, again, if we just go simply into the design, I'm creating organic shapes because I want it to feel, have that sort of 60s, um, sort of friendly environment. We have these kind of organic shapes because they link to some of the story and narrative and lore of the particular people who might have built this. I have these linking things to the ground because, again, it allows me to create variety within the shape. So you can see here, I'm able to create different variety of shape using the same idea. So we can see that I have these sort of linking to the ground. It allows me with a, one simple sort of visual aesthetic to create multiple shapes. And there you can see here, I basically have a big old egg sphere thing, this clamshell with a little triangle on top, and I'm just joining them together. It's these things that are very simple concepts, but as I'm drawing it, I'm making these decisions. And then we just have foliage everywhere because I want it to feel as if it is a friendly place, right? Um, it's not just this sort of uh, brutalist uh, Blade Runner-esque dystopian future. It is protopian or utopian, i.e. the future is going to be great, it's going to be fun, it's going to be happy, and uh, we're all going to have a great time. Okay, so let's actually jump in and see how we draw some of this. To draw it, I'm going to follow a couple of simple rules. And this is where we, I pl we apply the concept of arranging set pieces in a pattern. Now, there's a million ways I could do this. I could, you know, create a variety of things, but it, I'm trying to be very simple with it. So... What I'm going to try and do is create something that is in the foreground and that sort of defines the key elements. And so what I'm going to do here is think about, and I'm sort of imagining maybe we're going to have a horizon line somewhere here. This is only going to deal with the the sketch level of this. I'm not going to go too deep into, you know, finishing off the drawing because you can see that here. If you want to know how I do this, you can check out the quick start guide because, um, again, I'm using almost exactly the same technique there. Now, in your head, you can think about what is going on in terms of how this shot is set up. Like, where is this angle coming from? So I'm sort of imagining that, again, maybe... Right, I've got this shape that is created. Right, if we look in here, I've got this sort of circular shape that is created by the actual station itself. So here's my horizon line somewhere here. And what I'm seeing here is a big building in the foreground and have some stuff over here and in the background I'm going to repeat some of those elements. So I can think about and play with some very basic compositional rules. I've got this idea of the S-curve. I'm going to use the S-curve to allow me to draw the eye in this way. And what I'm going to do is think about how I can create pattern, an overlapping shape, and just basically do exactly what I said. So I'm thinking about, as I sketch out, where are these big shapes going? How am I going to use the compositional elements that I have to help me tell the story? So as we go into the distance, I'm going to understand that probably this is going to curve as well. Then these things are going to come down potentially. Some of them are going to come down and in some cases we have these jutting platforms. 
So again, blocking in these ideas, and I'm using a big pencil to, to help. But I'd probably use a, a small pencil if I was doing this um, for, for reels. So let's just think about the structure of what's going on there. I have this lip at some point, which is where we go from, if we think about the structural element, this is a side profile. Here we've got the canopy that goes above. Here we've got the lip of that canopy. Here we have the main platform. So we sort of have our well, sort of buildings built into this. That's sort of what's happening there. Now, I'm just going to repeat this basic idea in terms of primary form. I'm going to have some of these big shapes here. Have a bigger one over here, maybe some small ones. So I'm just thinking about pattern. This is very much abstract. Big shapes, small shapes. See if I can get a sharper pencil in here now. Yeah, what's happening? As I go up here. So again, horizon line maybe. Maybe a little bit higher here. Boom. And then we're gonna have our canopy coming up here. So again, the, the, what what this is doing is blocking out the simple iconic shapes, the simple story that is involved here. There's nothing tricky going on, nothing too sophisticated. Let's take these back a little bit. Now, remember the goal here is to establish the shot. That's all. Boom. Boom. So I feel like here, by blocking in these shapes, what I've done is I've told the story of depth. So I've got a big one here, right, foreground, and here I've got my sort of mid-ground, and probably up here, you can see that this also has a bit of, if we look at some of these shots, we can see that we have this kind of tree line up here as well. Now, we also could have a tower here. I don't know necessarily whether I need one though, but potentially we could create a, again, play around with some of these basic forms. Think about how I could do what I said was going to happen with these. Boom. So again, important to understand that there's an organic nature to the way these are organized. I'm trying not to line things up too much. Boom. And still trying to maintain this flow. And this is where, again, we get creative. I know that I can create this same idea again. It's just a matter of, look, do, do I want to? Do I want to do that again? Should I do something else? Now let's think about having some trees up here. And maybe down here again, we're going to make sure there's like a little helipad or something. So just an area that is empty. Now we would start designing pathways down here. Think about where, right, where there might be trees. to find some dimensionality. Now 
Now this next stage here is where, look, th this takes a little bit more time. So again, I'm just gonna walk through it and, and talk about the decisions I'm making because often adding that detail, getting that feeling of complexity in there is just a matter of repeating all these things and just all that we're doing is making a million little decisions. So I'm gonna to start to think about where these forms are kind of sitting above in space. Like where's the ground plane in relation to this? Because one of the things I like doing is, is thinking about what are all these little spaces in between? Like what's happening under here? How can we think about the story? Once I have those big shapes there, I, I, I have a feeling that look, the whole thing is going to work to a certain degree now. What my job is now is to think about how to create story and narrative and extra little bits and pieces here. And I'm thinking about overlapping shape, creating depth, and I'm thinking about the story now. Where are all these little characters likely to be? So again, we have the idea of a, right, a kind of a helipad thing here. And maybe we could put, you could sort of see if you want to think about the scale of characters, right? Maybe there's like a few people down there. Even that seems like pretty big to me. But you can see one of the things I have here is the idea of, yeah, let's have like a ship kind of parked here. Now, again, this might just be a sketch for a ship, and I, I would sort of do that more creatively later on. Could have one kind of floating there, right? We could, we could even, if we wanted to tell the story, we could have some other ones sort of floating, going around. Or we could have this other idea, which is that, again, you know, the ships are kind of docked. So I'm just putting in placeholder ideas here, right? We have these ships that are kind of docked on landing platforms. Whatever works. And again, you know, just think about, does this help the, the, the story, right? Does this help the design? Does this help what's going on? And all I'm going to do is then just go around and do exactly that same thing, but a million times more and that is what creates the complexity so as i think about where are little pathways i just go into this zone all right i go into flow a little bit and i start to think about if i'm a little character running around here here's a little ship where does that land right maybe there's some other little ships down here maybe there's some pathways maybe there's some trees you're imagining that if we can get to the stage where we can build an entire space station, that people are going to be pretty good at design, right? We might have some, at least you'd have some decent AI algorithms for how to make pleasing arrangements of plants. We'd probably be able to, you know, make the plants grow as big as they need to be. All these things. So one of the other iconic elements I have for these big structures is that there are often sci-fi style panel gaps, right? Structural elements that might mean different floors, different levels. And in, in most cases from a design perspective, that's really just there to um, show form. So these are, you know, sort of designer lines. It's a little bit of a hack. It's a little bit of a cheat. And what we're doing in many cases is just putting lines around the form that help us to describe the form. Again, totally a bit of a cheat, but it kind of works. And I'm thinking about where the shadows would be under here. So a lot of this is going to be in shadow. And if I was, I probably wouldn't put this in if I was just creating this for pencil because I, I do this at the color stage. But just for you here, I'm going to, I'm going to put those things in there. So again, I'm going to put one of these things off here offside here and then I'm going to overlap those so overlapping forms boom 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 again we'll, we'll see how good this turns out a big part of the success here is just having one or two simple concepts 
and repeating them and success is very much based upon how well I can go into flow and just start to think about these different elements as I go. So as with all demos, the result we get is not necessarily the most optimum one, but hopefully we'll come up with something that's kind of cool and you'll get the idea. All right, same thing here. Let's think about, let's think about here. Maybe let's make, maybe let's see if we can make a little tower here. So think about blocking that in. All right, and then think about again, the way that this is gonna grab the ground with these forms here. Let's put a few other ones to show that this one is, is bigger. And I'm just thinking about overlapping shape, overlapping shape, overlapping shape. <laughs> what goes in front of what? How do I show depth? Let's put some other things here. And if you look at some of these towers, one of the things I do is give them this kind of barnacle encrusted clamshell look where we can see that we have the idea of these forms, these buildings are kind of just hanging off things. Boom. So here I've got some foliage behind here. Also going to have more of these shapes. And yeah, it's just a matter of literally thinking about like that cityscape concept where the complexity is going to be created by just having a whole bunch of buildings. Like that's often what you see when you're looking at one of those, you know, epic shots is it's just the same thing. You look at a, a magical fantasy um, level or establishing shot for, you know, a show or a movie. And it, it's often the same thing. It's the same thing repeated a million times. They are organizing concepts that, that give you a big idea, but often it's just a matter of repeating this simple idea a million times. So again, hopefully there you get the basic idea. So as I said, the real trick here is just repetition. So I think I've kind of handled and I've got enough big elements and that's often a way that we feel out the scene as we're creating this type of thing is I need a, a few ideas, right? A few things that are going to break up. This is where we come back to these basic concepts, iconography, set pieces and pattern. So with the iconography, you can see I have these simple iconic elements. I'm just following this iconography. I'm repeating this set pieces. I'm not really putting in anything that is not here. And the pattern is really where the creativity often happens is me thinking about what are the elements I need here? What, what have I got? What's going to help? And I think I've got enough ideas here, certainly for this little demo. So I'll just show you how I would kind of finish it off. Just define the iconic element of this tree line up the top, which I think is really important. It is often broken by a few key little towers and things. And so much of success and failure here is in the construction drawing, right? This is very much a construction phase. A big part of what I'm doing is building the pattern, thinking about the composition. So this is where you can experiment. It's so important to have a, a part of your process like this where you can experiment, you can play around, you can think about it. Because you might put something here and say, Oh man, no, that's, that's too much, right? Um, I don't want something there. That's, that's too much of this shape. And you just get a feel, right? So much of design is based on your instincts that you develop. Is this going to be too complex, not complex enough? So when you're actually applying this, much of what we're doing is handling intellectually these concepts so that we can then work in the subconscious and just think about, again, more as a set designer, like, where do I put this? A bit over here, 
Oh, a bit over here. No, put this a bit over here. Does that look good? Oh, that's a bit much. You're like, oh, you know, you could have like, you could have a little ship going over here, but like that's in the background. You know, let's do that. Let's do that here, right? You know, if we want to have some sort of ships traveling around, right? Like, let's, let's do it here, you know? Want to have a few ships going through here. Again, why they have trails and things, I don't know, just sort of looks cool. But yeah, the idea of we got this living, breathing world. And again, here we could have, you know, a little bit more of like a... Again, I'm just drawing really simple spaceships here. Boom. So telling that story in the foreground. Right, boom. Now, what do we got here? Empty space, yes. But the empty space is important. So you can see I've utilized, again, that same kind of empty space here. Now we could still have some bits and pieces, right? Again, I could put another sort of thing here. You can play with that. It's so much of this is a matter of feeling, right? Gut feeling what's here. But I definitely, in the final grade, the final color, making all those adjustments, all those little final things that I talk about. Um, again, I talk about some of those in the in the quick start guide, but also in all my courses, right? So much of the, you know, uh, in the Line and Color Academy course that I have where I'm doing the, you know, I often do illustrations with backgrounds and it's real time, right? It's like this, but, you know, it's like 20 hours. So much of the, you know, fiddling around is thinking about these subtle issues from an illustration point of view. Where's the focus going to be? Where's the hierarchy going to be? Um, I want my sort of first, second, and third order um, of detail. Where do I want most of my detail to be? Again, here, foreground, right? That's where I want most of my detail to be. Second read would maybe be like sort of over here, all right? So foreground is first read. Uh, middle ground is, is maybe my sort of second read. So I will sort of want this place to be a second read. And then everything else is just like, look, it just needs to be there. So this is where if I was doing it as a drawing, I'm going to start to suggest these areas. If I'm doing it as an illustration in the line and color style, I'm going to plan to say, hey, let's leave this a little bit vague and I'll fade it out, right? It's going to be, where's the hierarchy of read? Boom, here. That's where I want everyone to look. So again, so much of this is subconscious illustrative taste. And once you handle all your establishing shot ideas, simple components, this is what we deal with. The bread and butter of what I think that we deal with as artists and illustrators is making these choices. Primary read, secondary read, tertiary read. Where's the hierarchy of detail, hierarchy of focus? What am I looking at? What's this story about? How do I tell this story better? And um, if you're drawing backgrounds and repeatedly drawing backgrounds, a big part of what we do, as I keep saying, and that's the whole point of this video, sublimate these ideas so that I can focus on that and I can think more like a creative professional, more like a director. Where do things go? How do I, how do I create a fun look? Let's put a bit more detail here. I want a few more trees here. Why? Because I'm going to have this dark tree versus light um, sort of tech. And, and, I'm, and I'm thinking about where the detail is, right? Where do I want the detail? I want some detail here. All right, I want to bring this to the foreground. I want to notice what's going on here, right? Again, I'm keeping this clean. I'm not putting foliage on here. I don't know why. It just feels like this is like a roof, but some of these roofs are like places where you go, right? Like a balcony. Um, and also I often have, there's often some little bits and pieces like aerials, things like that there. Not sure about this guy. Not sure about this. Anyway. So I'm progressing and starting to think about the secondary and tertiary reads. Where's the focus? Where do I put? All right, let's think about have a kind of almost like manta ray style ship here. Maybe some smaller little 
transport ships flying everywhere. Again, little walkways, you know, little cars going around, All right? Bits and pieces here again. Let's see if we can get that idea. Now, a big part of how we handle the, the detail going forward, again, is about suggestion. So here I might be drawing these pathways, right? I might be thinking about, oh, here's a tree here, a tree here, a tree here. There's a person here, there's a person here. Um, back here, I'm, I'm really just thinking about drawing the larger shapes, right? Where are the shapes that are going to be grassy areas? Where are the shapes that are going to be big structures? And we can plan that out. Now, how you would illustrate those and draw those is very much based on your style, right? Like, what, what do you show? What do you not show as a general rule? Totally, totally up to you. And often I'm really trying to say, this is how I do it with the line and color style. But a lot of my experience is in teaching people how to, you know, paint, um, you know, build concept art style shots used to do a lot of that, um, a lot of students, um, you know, when I was teaching a lot in the university environments, you know, they'd be working in 3D block-ins, they'd have a completely different process to me. But these ideas are almost like, you know, can be applied to 3D just as much, right? You're doing very much the same thing if you're blocking this whole thing in uh, with Blender, um, you're trying to mock it up, you need to think in the same way and, and, and thinking about this and understanding the components is a really good way to move yourself into that sort of design realm. So again, there's a big section and selection of ideas that we use no matter what type of artist we are, right? It doesn't really matter whether you're a 3D artist, a 2D artist, whether you're doing this little sort of pokey comic book style that I'm doing. Or, you know, you're mocking it all up in 3D, creating something for a, you know, Hollywood realistic feature film. We're, we're all thinking about very, very similar ideas. And uh, it's those ideas that I think often translate well to, you know, various different mediums. Anyway, I think this is probably enough for you to get the idea. Um, again, I probably just, uh, at this stage, this would be a good sort of construction drawing and I think a lot of what would follow next would be if I was doing this in pencil I, I'd start to refine like look where are the secondary primary tertiary reads how do I get the foreground middle ground background to read a little bit better you know how do we really focus on this again you know thinking about where is that key idea right maybe and this is why I'm always like I'm like oh, maybe I don't want to have these ships here again this is where I have the set piece, I have the idea. The question is, in terms of clarity, does that help, right? Does that help that form? Does it, does it make it feel a little bit too complicated? Is it an idea that doesn't necessarily follow across? So, yeah, and you know, this way, I might be able to focus a little bit more on this story. And if I want to bring that out, oh, the story like this ship, right, kind of flying over here, that's going to be something that's going to be easy. You can edit. It's not progressive and linear. You can erase some of these things, move them around, uh, play with it and experiment. Because what you're going to be doing as you create these images is learning how to apply all of these different concepts. All right, so that's probably enough of a demo, as I said. But let's think about some takeaways. What can you actually do with this? Now, there's a couple of issues here. We'll talk about the theory of it. But also what I want to do is actually take some of these resources and I'll make a blog post on the drawing codex and I'll link it in the description below where you'll actually be able to see some of these things. And uh, again, a big part of the assignment is, you know, look, if you want to practice this with my iconic shapes, go for it, right? If you want to make your own, go for it, whatever you want. But a big part of theoretically, I think what I'm saying here before we go to the assignment is that the more you practice with this, with simple set pieces, the better you get, I think, three fundamental things. The first is thinking creatively. So if I kind of handle the basic concepts and I say like, look, I can't make up new shapes necessarily. I can just modify the ones I have. It means that this thing is gonna be consistent. And what I have to think about more are, as I said, hierarchy of detail, what's my foreground, what's my story. We get better at thinking creatively. We get better at focusing on the things that I think really matter. Secondly, you actually get better the more you do it at drawing them. So if you're doing this for the first time, 
it's probably going to suck because you haven't gotten used to putting these ideas together. The visual library is not as solid. You haven't had, you know, I've drawn these silly clamshell buildings quite a number of times now. Now, you know, not just in this, but as designs and, you know, little background shots that are, you know, in other panels as well. So I kind of have an idea how they go together. And that's partly to do with the actual drawing of it. It's me making choices based on like, oh, you know what? I tried putting too many things here and that didn't work. Here's the right sort of balance. You get better at actually understanding what makes up the shot. And again, that a big part of that is actually getting better at drawing them. Drawing them, making good decisions, thinking about that high level. Again, the set pieces, the iconography, the pattern. You get better at drawing the set pieces. You get better at creative, creatively engaging your mind. And you also learn about how to arrange these in terms of pattern, what works iconically. So th these things go together. The idea of drawing them, arranging them, thinking creatively are kind of separate concepts. But again, when you're actually applying it, th they're happening at the same time. Thirdly, I think what you get good at is adding special items. So what you kind of notice is that in some of these shots, what I've got is something that's a little bit out of the ordinary. So here I have this tower that is a little bit more of a focus. Now I've been able to add that because I've supported it with all this stuff around. I also have this shot, which again is actually using these same concepts as a background. The key though is to think about where this ship is landing and to frame it. And by practicing and playing around with it, I get that freedom to be able to just kind of put in the background when I want it to be a background make an establishing shot of it when I need it to be an establishing shot. And as you can see here, it exists in the background of many of these shots in significantly diminished form, right? So if you actually zoom up here and then look at the quality of some of these background elements, they're pretty low, but it reads as the same because I've had practice at doing all of these different ideas. And the more you practice your thing, the more you will be able to combine it creatively, create better illustrations out of it. And again, you know, make things that feel less like just generic background. The fundamental concept here is that a simple framework like this can lead to very complicated results. I'm literally just drawing the same one or two things here. I figured out what they are. I've cut out things that don't work. I have experience that tells me what is likely to work and not work. As I'm thinking about it, I adjust and tweak, but because I have a simple framework, the way that I tweak, the decisions that I make are very much in terms of, can I add more foliage? Can I add some of these wings? Can I add more overlapping shapes? Can I do this? Not having this infinite series of options available to me. A simple framework can equal complex results. And often, if you are looking at complicated results in films or games or comics, they are often by nature built from simple elements. That's what allows you to create an easy to understand environment. It's the same thing repeated, especially when you're dealing with science fiction environments that don't exist anywhere. We need to communicate and create some logic there. And this stuff does that automatically. It automatically creates logic and repetition so that we understand, yes, we're in an alien environment. Yes, it's complicated, but there's some underlying structure here that makes it all make sense. Let's look at what you could do as an actual assignment. So here it's worthwhile unpacking that there are many skills that you're putting together when you create a, a more complicated background like this. And you can and probably should reduce the scope of your drawings and, and your sort of plans in the beginning. I think it's good to think about little assignments like this where you can break down the skills that are going into creating a larger image like this and practice them. And try and separate out where, again, you're practicing drawing these elements. You could be picking your own elements. You could use these ones, whatever you want. But let's just use these ones as a good example. So, right, something you could play with is just creating a top-down view. So just think about, look, we're just looking straight down. And what you're going to try and do is arrange some of these elements in a pleasing way. And what we're thinking about here is just this idea of 
how do I arrange these elements in a way that is visually pleasing and has some kind of logic? So we might imagine in this shot, like what is the utility of this? Hey, let's just have a sort of spaceship, right, flying above. And, you know, if this was a comic book panel, we might have a little balloon. Now, you don't have to put those in, but it talks to the utility of being able to draw these elements from above. Now, in this case, what we're thinking about is just simply how do we arrange these primary forms and then how do we build onto them? So there's a lot that can be said about abstract composition. Using rules for these things, you can have your rule of thirds, whatever. I think in many cases, what we're trying to do with those things is build our instinctive understanding of what looks good. So I think just playing around is a really good way to build your natural ability to compose well. Here, what I'm going to think about is these large shapes. All right, and again, let's think about putting some of these extra structures on there, etc., etc. And again, we could potentially think maybe there's some big road here, right? And either side of it, we're going to have these patterns and these gardens. So if you want to look at where a lot of that's happening, again, we can see the same idea there. We've got areas of green foliage. We have streets. And again, a part of your design is, do these streets curve, right? Do we create nice sweeping arcs, right? How do we, how do we, how does your particular design work? But this is where you can think about just playing with these initial forms and shapes. But again, if you're getting stuck there, do a few more of the previous step where you're just thinking about like, hey, how do I create a composition where people look, right? And just play with these forms. So the key here is we're playing with simple forms. I'm, 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 I can't make a new building. I can't make an interesting doing that. All I can do here is think about how could I make this thing more interesting? How can I create a variety of shapes here? How can I use the elements of, I've got roads, and then I've got areas of, of foliage, etc., etc. How can I think about this and just create little worlds using very basic initial primary forms? Now, the better you get at drawing these, the more you understand that the primary forms that you're basing your iconography and your design on are things that you can build up to. So another part of this assignment is just practice drawing some of these in an isolated way. So try and think about, hey, where, where are, where are these different shapes going to end up? and just experiment. Etc, etc. So do a mix of these things and slowly try and build up to putting them together. And I think that really is the best way to sort of formalize this assignment. Try and play with these. Now, you might also, depending on how good your perspective is, you, you can play around with very simple tasks, right? So you see here, Basically, what I have is the idea of, hey, we've got a frame, right? We've got like a wall, right? Let's think of this as like, oh, I've got a wall here. And again, what, what's going on in, in the shot? Who knows? But often with backgrounds to illustrations, the things that we're drawing in the background are not the key. They're not the hero. They're just a small element. So focus on and worry about creating backgrounds that maybe don't necessarily look that amazing, they're not always going to have to be an establishing shot. But again, what you want to think about is, how can I just 
place these primary forms that I have and try and make an interesting set of overlapping shapes. How can I frame this basic idea? And just experiment with these primary forms. And what you'll notice is that depending on where we kind of put our horizon line, right, it's going to sort of direct the eye, it's going to create certain leading lines. And then we can think about, okay, how do we, how do we structure, right, how do we, how do we organize bits and pieces? How do we create a, a pleasing composition or a pleasing arrangement of these shapes? And Again, the most important thing to understand is that this is where the battle is often won. This is where we fight the major battles that are going to make sure that our shot is either really interesting or oh, it's just kind of okay. But again, what you'll find is the more you experiment with a little set piece, the more you'll understand that, oh, okay, yeah, these are the tools I normally have compositionally when I'm drawing this particular environment. These are the things that work. These are the things that don't. So utilize these concepts and just try and fill in some basic spaces. So again, another really simple way of thinking about this, another kind of little mini assignment, is to think about having a space. Right, so think about this is just, this is a structure. And again, this is very much linked to the actual structure, but you could just make it whatever, right? You could just make it literally a cube. And what your job is, is to kind of make this cube look like that. Like how do we get this form here that is just a boring block? How do we get this to look interesting? How do we transfer this visual design language? onto this simple primary form. Boom, boom, boom. Right, and again, just think about, like, how, how would I make this feel as if it is just a little bit of that design language, right? Almost as if you sort of got some giant laser cutter and you just do, right? Like sort of took a chunk of that out, right? Like how would, how would we make that happen? Like what goes on here? How would we arrange these particular forms? And just play around with these. So again, here, think about, maybe we can have a big one, right? Let's, uh, you know, put a slightly smaller one here. Again, maybe we have one of these platforms kind of juts out a little bit. You can see that's often happening here. All right, got this big shape here. And again, maybe we've got some sort of gardens over here. You know, another one of those helipads. Maybe some smaller ones over here. So just start to experiment, right? So this way we're taking the pressure off ourselves from thinking about, oh, I'm gonna make an illustration and just start to play with visual design ideas. Start to think about how your particular environment goes together and really imagine it as like, yeah, look, you can, if you understand what you're doing, you can just apply this stuff to any shape, any form. And if you start out doing that to really simple forms and simple shapes, it will just make your life a little bit easier in the beginning. Give this a go. You can literally use my example here. And as I said, I will create a blog post with just look, it'll just link to this video on YouTube and I'll just put these pages up so you can see them bigger. Uh, and I'll also take a nice photo of this. I'll put all that up there. And if you want to play around with this same idea, um, go for it. If you want to modify it a bit, right, you know, create different shapes, go for it. If you want thinking about something completely different, again, I'll have some other videos in the future going over different ideas. If you want me to make something on some type of background in particular, let me know. But again, my basic idea is maybe let's do a forest one and uh, maybe we could do the same city, but from the ground, right? So you're seeing it from a, a, per, a person walking around because have some great examples of that. But either way, um, check out those resources, give this a go. Just think about how you're constructing your backgrounds. Hopefully this idea of a framework can help you to manage some of that complexity. And again, you know, I'm keen to hear what you think of this. If you give it a go, 
let me know in the comments, uh, you know, if this one did actually move the needle for you and allow you to draw some cool backgrounds. Um, other than that, we'll catch you around. Happy drawing.